when you're talking about functions, the domain of a function is the set of x values that you're allowed to plug into the function and get some acceptable output. So you just have to watch out things for things like uh, division by zero or negatives under square roots and, and things like that that would yield values that don't make sense. But you notice for absolute value functions that that doesn't exist. If you just have absolute value of x, you can plug in anything and take the absolute value of it. So what typically happens for absolute value functions is the domain will be all real numbers because you can plug in any x value and get an outcome. So there's different ways to write that. You can either write from negative infinity to infinity uh, or um, that's called interval notation, which you're probably familiar with, uh, or you can write a capital R with an extra bar out front that's math shorthand for the words all real numbers, basically saying your domain is all x values. Um, or you can write it out in English. You can write the words all real numbers. All right, so usually any of these would be acceptable. You just might want to check with your instructor just to make sure you're writing it how they would prefer, if they would rather interval notation or something like that. All right. Um, now, what about range? Range is a little trickier, though. The range is the y values, the, the set of y values that come out of the function. So if it's just an absolute value of x function, well, the y values you would get out would be 0 and greater. You can't get a negative out of, a, out of an absolute value uh, term like this. So it looks like our y values that we get start at 0 and then go upwards from there. So our range would be either from zero to infinity if we wanted to use interval notation, or we could say all the y values that are greater than or equal to zero. Either way is fine. And notice I put a bracket around the zero because we actually do get this y value, but anytime you have an infinity in interval notation, you're gonna put a, a parentheses there. All right, so this is the domain and the range of just the, the generic absolute value graph. Now, this is probably not what you'll have on your homework and test. Uh, what you'll probably have is some version of the absolute value function, like the absolute value of x minus 5, you know, or something, something like the absolute value of x plus 2 um, plus 10, you know, or something like that, where the generic parent function, the absolute value V-shaped graph, is moved up, down, left, or right, possibly reflected, and depending on how advanced your course is, maybe even stretched or compressed, which will even change the steepness of it a little bit. So what, what would change if you had other stuff added to just the absolute value of X? Well, here's, here's typically what will happen. The domain, regardless, will be all real numbers. Because think about it, if you take a V-shaped graph that extends out in both directions, the X values go to the left and to the right forever. Even if you shift the graph a little bit left to right, it still goes out left and right forever. And, and so um, the domain will continue to be all real numbers. Now the thing that will change though is the vertex, I'm sorry, the range. The range depends on where the vertex is. If, if your graph has been moved up, then the y values will be from that new vertex's y value up, or if it's faced downward, it'll be from the vertex's y value downward. So I can't really tell you without seeing a specific example which of these it'll be, but it'll either be a y value y greater than a certain value, or y less than or equal to a certain value but it'll be one of these two depending on um, how your graph opens, either up, the y values will be greater than a certain number, or if it opens down, the y values will be less than a certain number. 